Hello, Paper Florists, and thank you so much for joining me for part two of our Bud Rose tutorial. Uh, so today we're actually going to go over the foliage and finishing off the stem. Um, so it's going to be a really quick, hopefully, tutorial. Um, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the leaves, but I will show you how to get this kind of jagged edge on the leaves and how to shape them and then assemble them to the stem. So I'm gonna set this aside and we will go over our supplies. So we're gonna need the rose that we finished the other day or earlier. And then we're going to need some 26 gauge wire. Uh, this can be cloth or paper covered wire. Um, I actually have cloth because that's what I can get my hands on. Cypress extra fine crepe to wrap the stem with. Uh, if you don't want to use the extra fine, you can use your doublet. Um, and we are also going to need our fern and moss doublet for the leaves. Um, as an optional coloring addition, uh, if you have the red iron oxide pan pastel, um, I will show you how to add that as well to get some extra definition on your leaves and stem. So we will get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually do a one single pass on my stem with some crepe tape. So I'm going to take my fold of cypress and cut a like half inch strip of crepe off the top and stretch it out just a little bit. Grab my tacky glue. Put a little bit on there to start. And then I'm gonna come right up here underneath where my sepal is and start wrapping here. And what I wanna do for this bit is actually kind of build up a little bit of the rose hip. So I'm actually going to add just a tiny little bit more glue here. And then I'm going to take my strip here. I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit more, a little bit further. And then I'm going to twist it and then start wrapping it around and have this to where it's folded in half. So we're going to wrap that around a few times just to kind of build up some bulk right here at the top of the stem and you can stop occasionally to add some glue just to make sure it stays tacked down and I'm just going to keep stretching and keep this folded for just a little bit more so I get that built up and then I'm going to put a little bit more glue here right at the base of where this is folded and then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to twist it again so that way it's back to flat and then start wrapping it around the base again and kind of pulling it down so we start to get a transition from that bulk down to the stem oh, and I just ripped it one of the dangers of using the extra fine for this is that it does tear super easily. So I'm just gonna glue this off. To finish that up. And then I'm going to start wrapping again. So just add a touch more glue and then start where we kind of left off here. And just like with floral tape, I'm kind of stretching as I wrap around the stem so it gets really smooth. Um, usually I'll use the extra fine or I will use a 
strip of the heavy uh, crepe or 180 gram to wrap my stems with. Um, I just feel like it gets a smoother look rather than using the doublet. Um, but I know several people that do use doublet and it looks fine. So just going to continue on down the stem here. And if you want to make your stem shorter, you can definitely do that. Um, since I'm kind of going for the long stem rose look, I'm going to keep this one long. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue here at the bottom. Finish wrapping it up. And then once I get to the end here, I'm going to put a little glue right at the very end of the wire. And then wrap it around some more push that down and then I can pull this off and that'll finish it up and we're going to do another pass of this so if the bottom doesn't get completely covered that's okay all right so now we've got our shaped rose hip kind of at the base of our stem here move that over and then we'll get to the leaves so I'm going to set that aside for now and then I'm going to take my doublet and so I've already cut a piece that is uh, let's see about three and a half inches wide so I'm going to take that and we're going to cut some pieces off of that for our leaves so the first one we're going to do is two and a half inches tall so about there I don't have to be exact but just roughly that and that's going to give us our biggest leaf and I'm actually going to do, we did on this one, I'm going to do two leaf sprigs. So we will need two of these larger leaves. And this will give us two here. So if I take this, since I've already got it folded in half, I'm just going to cut those apart like that. So that's our largest leaf. And then I'm going to take this again. And we're going to go down to... Do one and three quarters of an inch, and that'll be our next size down on our leaf. And then we'll do another one, one and a quarter inch, so about there. All right, so this is going to give us, yeah. so if I fold that in half and half again, that'll give us four of the really small leaves at the bottom. Make sure that's actually a half. do on the smallest one here. So I'm going to take this and cut it at an angle. And I did that while everything was the same way that it was folded. So that way I have my same color on the same side. So when I pull these apart, they'll give me my chevron with the same color on the same side. So we've got four small ones. And then we're going to do four of 
this size. I think I may need to cut another piece of that size. So I'm just going to stick that up like that and cut that off. And then we're going to make that just a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to cut off just a touch there. It's about a quarter of an inch I'm cutting off there. So it's a little less wide. i do the same thing for this one. Okay. And then cut these so they're separate. And again, I'm keeping them exactly the way I had them folded. So these colors are facing each other and those colors are facing each other. So that way when I cut it on the diagonal, I'll get the correct chevron for all four of my leaves here. Okay. We've got one. and four. So those are our medium. And then this will be our largest size. So we're going to cut this on the diagonal as well. Just like that. And again, since we had the colors facing each other when we did the cut, we can have the same color on the right side. All right, so we've got our large, medium, and small. So I've got three 26 gauge wires here. Um, so the, obviously the first two for my big ones here are actually gonna be the longest wire. So I'm going to take this one and this is a 12 inch long piece of wire and I'm actually just going to cut it right in half. I've got my wire cutters and snip that right in half. So we've got two six inch pieces there. Okay. And then for the smaller ones, I'm actually going to make them all the same length. So I'm going to take these and we're going to again cut this in half. And then we'll cut these in half as well. So make that three inches. All right, so now we have eight three inch lengths of wire here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put these leaves together. So we've got, I'm gonna start with these small ones first. Actually, no, I'm gonna start with the big ones first because that's gonna make more sense. So we're going to measure how much glue we need to put on. So I'm gonna put my fingernails there and I'm actually gonna stick this right into my glue bottle so it'll cover the wire like that and then I'm going to take my piece here I'm gonna lay the wire down on top of it and kind of push some of the glue off of the wire and then I'm gonna pull the wire down a bit so the base of where the glue is here on the wire is at the base of the leaf. And then we've got this little space here that's just glue and no wire. And that'll give us some extra wiggle room so we can cut the top of our leaf. So I'm gonna take this and just sandwich it right on top of the wire and squish it on down. 
make sure it's stuck really well on both sides. And then I'm going to come back on the front here and I'm going to run my fingers or my nails along either side of the wire. So we have kind of this prominent spine on our leaf. And there's a reason for that. So when we go in and do our coloring, that's more prominent. So we're going to do that on all of our leaves. So let's set that aside, do the next one. Figure out how far down the wire needs to go. Dip that into blue. Make sure it's good and coated. And then take your paper and the wire. We're going to just put some glue here along the top, rubbing it off of the wire and then pulling the wire down. So where the glue stops on the wire is going to be where the end of the leaf is. And sometimes you can kind of push that down so it stays in place so it doesn't roll around when you put the second piece on top. So we're going to just plop this right on top. Flip it over, make sure it's all good and stuck down. And then again, we're going to run along the wire. And then we're going to do the same thing for these smaller ones as well. Didn't get quite enough glue there at the top, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay. show one more of these on camera and then we'll jump to the next bit. So the last one here, just going to put glue on. There's like an extra little bit of glob there so I'm going to use that to put it at the top and then stick this on, pull the wire down just a touch. Then sandwich it in between my paper, squish that down, flip it over, squish it down. And then run along either side of the wire so we get that spine. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and then we'll pick up from there. So I will be right back with you. Okay, so I am back. I've mitered all of my leaves here. So we've got our little kite shapes. I also went ahead and cut the basic leaf shapes for one set of my leaves just to kind of save some time uh, because I know for you guys sitting here watching me cut all these, it's going to be like watching paint dry. So just in the interest of not boring you all to death, I went ahead and did some ahead of time. So uh, this is the leaf shape that we're after. So it is a little bit more round 
than a lot of the leaf shapes that we have done before. So we are going to do that shape with this little curved point at the top. So I'm going to grab my largest little kite here and take my detail scissors. And so right above where the wire stops, I'm going to start my cut here, go down a little bit, curve, and then kind of curve out. And then we're going to make like a D shape and then make sure that the bottom is a little bit more rounded as well. And we're gonna stop about there. And then I'm going to come up right next to the wire and cut that piece off, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over and we'll do the same thing. So again, right above where the wire stops, I'm gonna do this cut and then start to curve out. And then cut a D shape. And then make sure that where my cut ends matches right across from where the cut on the other side ends. And come back up the wire along the side there. And then we pull that off. So we get a shape like that. Um, it is a little bit more rounded at the top than I'd care for, so I'm going to, going to go in and kind of slender that out just a touch on both sides. Okay, so we get a shape kind of like that. way and then we're gonna do the next one same thing cut start curving outward and then go back in stop your cut right where you touch the wire and then this off right up next to the wire. And that looks a little round too, but we're going to go ahead and flip it over, do the other side, and then we can even it out just a little bit more. Okay, so that curve out. Make our D shape and cut all the way to where the wire is and then cut up right up against the wire like that. And again, we're still a little bit rounder than I'd like. I'd like to go too round to start, then not round enough, if that makes sense. Because you can always cut away, but you once you make that cut, you can't get it back. So just keep that in mind. Get that one. And then sometimes for these smaller ones, like once I get a shape that I really like. So I really like this one. I'm going to actually use this kind of as my template to make the next one. So I'm going to line that up like point to point almost and just line up my wires. Stack that on top of the other one. And usually I'll flip it so I can see the contrast in the green. And then basically just cut around it like I was like if I were using a template. And this will help 
you get uniform leaves on both side, both sides of your sprigs. Pull that off. Snip off this bit next to the wire like that. And then I'm going to flip this over and then flip this over and match it up again and then do the second cut. Okay, make sure the cut all goes all the way to the wire and then cut up right up next to the wire. There we go. And doing it this way, what it'll do is it will give you that coverage with the paper so that way when you join everything together, you don't have to wrap paper like right up at the base of your leaf. So it's really handy to have that extra little bit there. All right, so those are those two. And then my last one, again, we're gonna do the same thing. So start right above where the wire ends. We're gonna do a steep cut curve it out make our D shape come back towards the wire make sure that cut hits right next to the wire there and then cut right up against the wire pull that part off and then we do that again And then we can kind of even it out a little bit so it looks the same on both sides. Cut one side a little bit more shallow than the other, so I'm going to even that up just a little bit. Just like that. Okay. That's my tiniest leaf there. And then I'm going to again use that as my guide for the next one. I'm going to line that up there. And start my cut. Okay, flip it over and flip this over so we get our contrast again. Line it up and then do our second cut around the edge here. Make sure it gets all the way to where the wire is and then Again, just snip that off and then you can kind of go through and roll that little bit of paper that's at the base of your leaves just to make sure it goes all the way around and you don't have just like this flat chunk of paper at the bottom. And this is really handy to do while your glue is still a little tacky so that way it'll Get that wrap. All right, so we've got our leaves. So we've got large, medium, and then small that are gonna kind of fit together like that. So you get an idea of what that's gonna look like once we get it all put together. So the next thing that we're gonna do is show you how to do the little jagged edge that rose leaves have. Actually, I'm going to that out just a little bit. Okay, so 
So this part is very tedious, so I will say that it is optional. If you do not want to do this part, you can skip to the next part, which is the coloring to get an extra little bit of realism. Um, I do think that if you skip the edge detail on the leaves, you should do the coloring. Um, so that way you kind of make up for not having that edge detail. It's really good if you do both, but you do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my jagged cuts and this is going to be similar to what we did with the sepal so i'm just gonna kind of go in cut in kind of curve it a little bit and then cut off the bit that's hanging off here So you start to get that kind of sawtooth edge detail there. And you can make these details as large or as small as you'd like. I'm going a little big here just to show for demonstration purposes, but um, if you're going for realism, you want to make them a little smaller than what I'm doing right now. And we're actually just going to stop right at the widest part of the leaf here, and we're going to leave this rounded. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this over, do the same thing on the other side. And then we just keep going until we get to the widest point on our leaf, which we are almost there. Got one more to do. There we go. All right, so that is what your leaf should look like. You got all your little jagged edges there. All right. And you'll want to do that for all of your leaves. Um, when you get to the smaller ones, you may need to use a different pair of scissors. Um, it might be wise to use something like embroidery scissors or something like that so you can get in and get the, that tiny little detail. I'm going to try to do what I can with these scissors, um, but if I can't manage it with these, then I will use my embroidery scissors. So I'm going to show one more time on the next size down. So we're just kind of going in and making these little jagged cuts here.
Okay, so just until we get to the widest spot there, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. One little dangly bit here. I'm trying to get off. There we go. Okay. So we've got our jagged edge there. And I'm actually going to turn the tip of this down just a little bit because it seems long. Okay. So there we go. Alright. So now I'm actually going to do the rest of these off camera because again, it is super tedious and I think if you watch me do the rest of these, you will fall asleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up and then we'll come back and put them together and slap them onto the stem. All right, so I am back and I've went ahead and done all of the little edge details on my leaves and you can see on this set, I've already done some coloring um, so you can kind of see the difference between these two. So I just did that by adding some of that red pan pastel. So I'm going to show you how to do that on this set. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And I've got my piece of paper underneath just to kind of keep my surface clean. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to grab my pan pastel. I'm actually just going to use my fingers for this. I feel like the detailing on these leaves is just easier to do with your finger than trying to do it with a brush. Because what the first thing I'm going to do, and this is why we did the prominent um, spine on the leaves here, by pushing down the paper around the uh, the wire, is so that way I can take my pan pastel and just basically run my finger along that raised spine. And just kind of get that color on there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is grab a little bit more color and kind of go around the edge of my leaves here. And you kind of want to make sure that when you... Um, apply the color you're kind of going with the grain um, and this will also kind of follow along your little jagged cuts as well so you're just going to go through and kind of tap that color along the edge of your leaves and you can even take your other fingers and kind of blend that out some so it's not quite so stark in some places and you can even add just like a little bit in the middle of the leaf too. Just to kind of give it a little bit of variation. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these as well. I do find that it is easier from holding the leaf when I'm coloring the spine here. And this pan pastel looks all cracked and everything because I had to basically reform it. Um, when I ordered it, it arrived shattered. So I had to 
uh, kind of crush the whole thing up and mix it with alcohol um, to get it to kind of reform into the pan to where it was usable. Um, it's the same thing you can do to fix broken makeup. So if you've seen that trick before, this works great for pan pastels as well. So if you drop one or if you get one that's broken, that's how you can salvage it. And you can see here, I've got some that have, that's kind of gotten on the side here. I'm just gonna blend that out with my finger just a little bit. So you don't have this like weird line next to the spine. And this really goes pretty quick. Last one. Okay. So I'm just gonna wipe my finger off here. Okay. Way. All right, so now what we can do is assemble both sprigs and then we'll attach them to the stem. So I'm going to, I'm just stretching out some of my stem wrap here real quick. So that's ready to go and then I'm gonna kind of configure my first two leaves here. So I'm going to take this leaf and bend here at a 90 degree angle. Same thing for this other one. We're going to bend it the opposite way. Again at about a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to put some glue on one. Stick those together. Okay, so I do want to have those a little bit further down on my stem so this doesn't come down enough, so I need to wrap this a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of my stem wrap. I'm going to start like just towards the bottom of where I already have paper covering the wire. I'm going to wrap that around a couple times and lead up there. Face down. I'm going to come back over to this set. Put just a little bit more glue right here along the front. And then I'm going to attach. Actually, I need to go a little bit further down. Just a touch. There we go. this set and attach it right there. Right now we're looking at the back of these leaves. Actually, I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. Just about like there. It's about 
maybe three quarters of an inch down from the main leaf. And then I'm gonna go back up to make sure that gets wrapped really good. Put some glue here, right where the joint is. Wrap. And then come back down. take my two smaller leaves and do the same thing. So bend it 90 degrees, bend the other one 90 degrees the other way. Actually, that's a little too short, so there we go. And then glue these two together. And I'm just adding a little bit of glue so that way they kind of stick to each other as a pairing so that way they, you know, that they're directly across from each other like that on your stem. Okay, and uh, those are together. I'm going to add... A little bit more glue right here. Flip it over. And again, we're going to attach it to the back. Just like that. Actually, I do need to wrap that a little bit more. So I get my spacing right. these cover over these. And then we're going to wrap that around. Just add a little bit of glue. a little bit thin so when we attach it to the stem there won't be a whole bunch of extra bulk that we've got to hide. So we've got that. And that's pretty well stuck on there. And now you can kind of go back and adjust the angle you want these leaves to actually be in. So I'm going to bring those up so the angle isn't quite as sharp. Okay. And this is where you can kind of go in and like shape your leaves a little bit. So to show what I'm doing here. I'm kind of taking the wire and kind of bending it to the side a little bit. And then you can go in and like stretch one side of the leaf so it kind of conforms to that bend. And you can kind of shape the leaves however you want. So I'm gonna go through, kind of shape all of these just to give them a little bit more dimension and character. I wouldn't stretch them too terribly much because rose leaves are still kind of flat. Um, so 
So I wouldn't go too crazy uh, as far as like cupping the sides of your leaves. Um, you can definitely do that if you want to add a little bit more shape. But again, like I said, I wouldn't do that too terribly much. Because um, leaf, uh, rose leaves are not really shaped like that. So again, just kind of going through and like shaping them up. And then just make sure that these smaller ones kind of go back behind the ones that came before them. So um, your top leaf is what stays in the front. And you can even kind of go in and like shape the, the sprig a little bit too. You have something like that. So that aside, and then we'll do this next one here. Oh, actually, I put my pan pastel away too soon. Because we are going to need that to color the rest of the stem here and then the main stem of the rose. So I'll keep that out for now. Okay. So again, we're just gonna add a tiny bit of paper a little bit further down on here. gonna pull that off so I don't want to add too much bulk and have it be too thick so let's do that and then these two and I'm giving about a quarter of an inch amount of space between the bottom of the leaf here and and where we are going to attach it to the main sprig. I'll go ahead and bend these two just so that way it's done. Just kind of hold it so it'll stick. Okay, we've got that, and then I'm going to flip this over to the back and put glue here. inch to three quarters of an inch of the way down from the main top leaf. We're going to stick these down. And then I'm going to figure out where I want to put these. Those are going to be about the same spacing. So what I'm going to do to kind of eliminate some of the bulk on this one because so I'm going to take the two wires from the longer or the uh, bigger or middle sized leaves here and kind of cut off some of the excess wire so we're not 
adding more and more bulk. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that part. And you want the paper to come right underneath where those two leaves are joined together. And just wrap that around. And I'll start going down. position our leaves where we want them to be. Just like that. And then again we can kind of go in and shape them a little bit. them how we would like for them to be like that all right so I'm gonna set that down and grab my rose I'm actually going to grab move this out of the way for right now until we need it again for the pan pastel and then we're going to figure out exactly where we want the leaves to be attached. So I want to keep them kind of towards the top of my stem so I have enough to put it into a taller vase since it is a longer stemmed rose. So I think what I'm going to do, and this is just so I can find the point where I'm going to attach it, so I'm going to bend it kind of at a sharper angle about right there. And then do the same thing for this one. Give that about I don't know, an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half space from where the leaves end. And there we go. And we've got a sharp angle so we can attach it and then we can adjust the wires later. All right, so 
first one so that I want this to be the front of my rose so when it's in the vase that's what you see so I do want to kind of have these on either side of the rose kind of towards the back if that makes sense so I'm gonna go maybe let's see in the bottom of the rose about three inches down from where the rose is so like so from here to here is about three inches, and that's where I'm going to attach my first sprig of leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it to the stem first so I can get the positioning right, and then we'll wrap it in the paper. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take just a little bit of my pan pastel kind of rub it over this part of the sprig since we added more paper and then kind of soften that out some with my thumb so it's not quite so bright. Okay, so now I'm going to down so about there. Okay. I'm gonna attach the leaf sprig there. Hold that for a few seconds. Pretty good and adhered right now. And then we're going to take our stem wrap, add some glue. And start wrapping. And what I'd like to do for this part, just to kind of blend this in a little bit, because you can kind of see the wire sticking out, is I like to put a little bit of glue here and then go back up with my paper strip. So that way, Cover that up a little bit more and give you a couple more layers that you can hide that with. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue here up towards the top. And then start wrapping back down. Okay, and then the next one, I'm going to put about right there. So I'm going to put some glue on my leaf sprig. Straighten out my wrap again. Stick this down. And kind of have that towards the back of the stem. Just hold it there for a few seconds. So it'll stick. And then I'm going to take my wrap and just kind of keep on wrapping around. glue here so it'll stay and then again just add a little bit more glue and wrap it around and then back up and kind of bend that up out of the way 
right and then bring that back around a tiny and then go back down down to the bottom just to make sure that the bottom of my stem gets completely covered and off the excess here and then glue the bottom just to make sure it gets all covered with the paper so flip it over flip that over add a little bit more glue that's done can go back up here so I'm gonna my fingers okay so now I can kind of go back up here and kind of fine-tune how I want these sprigs to sit and kind of have them go back a little bit oh, like that. sorry bumping the camera here okay so just kind of have them go back a little bit kind of bring that forward and again, you can kind of bend and shape the leaves however you want. You can kind of have them come in towards the flower, like it's kind of hugging it, or you can have them splayed out back towards the back. So I like how that looks. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, and then just take my finger into the pan pastel again. And we're just kind of going to color the stem and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start from the bottom up so that way it won't disturb the wrap since the wrap is going around this way uh, if you go down sometimes it'll lift up the paper and we don't want that so going up keeps that from happening thing I really like about this red pan pastel is that it does kind of mute the green a little bit so it's not quite so like bright in your face green for these rose stems because they're really not that bright. This kind of gives it that like almost kind of brownish green quality that rose stems tend to have. I'm just going to take that all the way up to the top here and then you kind of use your thumb to blend it out some so it's not just a bunch of red splotches up the stem. Got a little bit of extra glue here. I'm going to scrape that off. And the other thing you can do is like where the where the leaves meet, you can actually add a little bit more of that pan pastel to kind of blend that transition a little bit more. Just like that. And you can add more of the Pan pastel to the stem if you'd like. Um, I usually like having it just up one side of it, um, but if you want more, you can always kind of add little spots here and there, like on the back or um, kind of throughout, so it's not just like all up one, strictly one side. So let's do something like that. Add a little bit back here too. Okay. And 
if you want to go, you know, super crazy with it, you can go add a little bit to your sepals as well. Just make sure you blend it really well. It's not like in your face red on the sequel. Feel free to leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys. Have a great day.